In the new film Moneyball, Brad Pitt plays the general manager of the Oakland Athletics who wants his field manager, Philip Seymour Hoffman, to adopt a radical theory symbolized by an argument over who should play first base. You can't start Pena first tonight. You'll have to start Hatterberg. Yeah, I don't want to go 15 rounds, Billy. The lineup card is mine, and that's all. Okay, the lineup card is definitely yours. I'm just saying you can't start paying it first. Well, I am starting him at first. I don't think so. He plays for Detroit now. You traded Pena. Moneyball is based on a book by the same name by Michael Lewis, which describes what happened when an actual team decided to base its decisions about ball players on new ways to think about the game. Ideas developed by a guy working at that time as the night watchman at a pork and beans cannery in Lawrence, Kansas. Bill James now works as a senior advisor to the Boston Red Sox. He'll join us in a moment. We'd especially like to hear from those of you in baseball. If you've seen the picture, did they get it right? Give us a call, 800-989-8255. Email us, talk at npr.org. You can also join the conversation on our website. That's at npr.org. Click on Talk of the Nation. And Bill James joins us now from a studio at Kansas Public Radio in Lawrence. Uh, Bill, it's been a while. Nice to have you back. Thanks for having me on, Neil. Um, And I wonder, do you think they got it right? In terms of uh, the look and feel of the places that we work, and the meetings that we sit through and the things we talk about, and uh, they couldn't possibly have gotten any, any more right. It was, it, it, the movie looks and feels and sounds exactly like it really does when uh, in baseball front offices. Uh, there's a meeting in the film, a couple of meetings, with uh, the old scouts who are uh, providing their advice on the players that uh, uh, Billy Bean, the manager of the Oakland Athletics, ought to sign up for the next season. Is that re- they're, 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 they're sort of played like dinosaurs for comic relief. Is that really what those meetings are like? The, uh, well, they, they've changed a little over the years, but the, uh, if, if this movie wins one Academy Award, it should be for casting for whoever cast those scouts. Because I tell you for sure, if you put me in a room with 10 scouts and those guys playing the scouts, nobody in the world could say, say which were which. They, they, were, they were perfect. <laughs> it was amazing. Um, and uh, they, they, uh, I thought one of the interesting ways was the way they intercut uh, between uh, the actors playing ball players And, boy, they looked very, very convincing in some cases. It was exactly like their counterparts in, the, in real life. And, and scenes from historic games. Right. And of course, if, you, if you're going to cut actual footage with with uh, recreations, you have to be really careful about the recreations. They did use a lot of, of uh, recently retired athletes to, uh, to uh, play the roles of the players, and sometimes they worked really well, and then uh, sometimes it's like, wow, isn't that Royce Clayton playing Miguel Tejada? He's, he's too skinny for that role. The, uh, but <laughs> it's a lot of fun to watch, see well, it anyway. You're going to heal from Miguel Tejada. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's interesting because these, uh, unlike so many baseball movies, uh, this is a movie about real players and real managers using their real names and what they more or less said. That's right. That's right. And uh, among them, some things... As I understand it, in the in the in the in the premiere of the movie, uh, which you attended, uh, you were sitting nearby Scott Boris, the famous agent, and there's a very unflattering remark about Scott Boris in the movie. Yeah, well, you know, P- Scott is an aggressive negotiator, and people do from time to time characterize that in a in an unpleasant manner. And uh, probably a baseball movie without somebody calling a Scott Boris a bad name would would probably not be exactly uh, accurate. But I, I don't think Scott stormed out in anger or anything. I didn't see it anyway. Uh, the other part, though, uh, these are your ideas, your approach to the game, uh, which you developed uh, back in uh, the baseball abstract. It's interesting. We see some images of one of those old, uh, these were like leaflets, pamphlets, uh, that you printed up and distributed yourself. I, I did. And can I tell people, deal that when I sold... Uh, 75 copies of the first book. One of the people who bought them was Neil Conan. That <laughs> That's right. Um, that is right. I, th- I think I have them all uh, in a trunk somewhere. I don't know where it is. <laughs> well, I don't know where mine are either. The, um, uh, they were uh, revelatory, uh, yet you've also said uh, it took 25 years for people to understand you were just trying to tell the truth and not trying to change the way they thought. Well, that's right. And, and also... Uh, the movie perhaps gives me more credit than I deserve, the, uh, which you know, I appreciate and I'm always happy to have it. But there were a lot of people doing analytical work about baseball and a lot of people trying to move the markers and, and uh, get people to think in terms of uh, 
uh, making statements that match the evidence rather than just ignoring the evidence and saying what whatever we thought was true. Part of it was, uh, as you thought about questions about what actually meant it took to win ball games, uh, you came up with uh, different kinds of calculations that have become fairly commonplace today. But that allowed people to say, "Oh, this is just fantasy baseball. This is just statistics." Right. That's right. And there are a lot of people who don't understand how statistics work and and can't think along those lines, and consequently tend to perforce, reject whatever conclusions come out of that line of thinking. And there's really nothing you can do about that. You can, you know, argue to those people for generations, but the only way you, you could ever possibly conv uh, convince them would be to re-educate them, which, you know, you don't have time to do that. So, yeah, it's, it's a waste of time to argue with those people. It, well, you wasted a lot of time. <laughs> I did. <laughs> you did. That's right. Uh, there's a film, uh, there's, a, there's a moment uh, where... Uh, as you also may know, I did work a little bit in sort of around the edges of baseball, nothing like what you did. Uh, but the uh, uh, they did hate you, Bill. <laughs> the uh, I never felt that they hated me as much. Well, it's it's a, it's a good storyline, but I survived it if they did. Uh, well, you were challenging uh, the way people were thinking. It, in the film, it's presented as an argument over our walks as good as hits. The uh, yeah, the key to scoring runs in baseball is getting people on base. And for a long time, people wanted to de-emphasize that and argue that you can score just as many runs by stealing bases and hitting in the clutch and those sort of things. Well, stealing bases adds some runs, but very few. And uh, you lose most of the runs that you gain by having runners caught stealing. And uh, hitting in the clutch is, is unpredictable and unreliable. The way you really score more runs is by getting more people on base. And it took 30 years after myself and other people started writing that until there was a general agreement that it was true. And the uh, another idea is don't waste outs, don't bunt. Bunting is usually a waste of time. The uh, Generally, uh, yeah, I mean, if you think about it, bunt's the only play in baseball that both sides applaud. The uh, If uh, uh, if you, the home team bunts and you get a base, you get a, you, the home team applauds because they, they get a... They get a, a an out, and the other team applauds because they get a base. So what does that tell you? It's, nobody's really winning here. Nobody really wins. We're talking with Bill James, uh, the famous baseball analyst who uh, inspired some of the ideas behind the, the book and the movie of the same name called Moneyball. If you'd like to talk with him about the film, give us a call, 800-989-8255. Email is talk at npr.org. And it's interesting, Michael Lewis has been quoted recently uh, since the uh, the film came out as saying, uh, this window has closed. Uh, the uh, uh, Billy Bean and, and the Oakland Athletics in those years in 2002 had a real intellectual advantage by using these ideas, but they have since become so widely accepted uh, that the same factors that made the ball field uh, tilted and unfair in those days still make it unfair and tilted these days, which is that some teams can spend an awful lot of money to hire ball players and, and some teams can't. Well, that, that window has closed, but, the, you know, there will never be a shortage of ignorance. I mean, there, there will always be things that people don't understand, and, and uh, you just have to move on to the new areas of better understanding and, and master those to have the advantage that you had 10 years ago. And that's, that's in the nature of, of any progressive field, you know, that, that, that the things that worked 10 years ago aren't going to work anymore. And that, I mean, that's true, but it's, it's a limited truth, and, and there's still great advantages to be had by understanding the game better, uh, at, just as there were 10 years ago. You still work to understand the game better? I, 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 someday, I, every day I understand more, and it helps me understand how little I understand. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, there are intangibles. You've, you've been spending your life trying to measure them, find ways to measure them, uh, but there are such things. Well, there are many things that you can't measure, but 